Ever since the good old Belgrade days, I've been building my battleships as tanks. Now recently I started to fly the Abaddon, and let me tell you this, this ship is absolutely insane. I created a monster. Now what I did with uh, this Abaddon, I took the build that I did show you on the test server and I enhanced it. I actually improved it. Mainly capacity improvements, but at the same time I also improved the tank. And now this Abaddon has an average of 93, 93, 94 and 93% resistances. Now, I plan to improve that even more uh, with the addition of the B types, A types. I also have the thermal circulation implant that is uh, helping a lot in making this ship a brick. You know, I think I'll have to start redefining what I say uh, when I say a chunk because I'm not really sure that the term chunk is applicable to this Abaddon. Uh, this thing is something above a chunk. I, I don't know how to call it. My friend called it a mountain and yeah, uh, pretty accurate, honestly, pretty accurate. So my goal with the, with the Abaddon is to create the tankiest ship in the game, the tankiest battleship in the game. And I think I'm on a good, good track to achieve that. The I have already achieved that with the revelation. The revelation has terrifying resistance. That thing I don't know how how I made that thing, but I did the same thing uh, on the revelation and and yeah, that thing. It's pretty scary to look at its tank. With the damage control, I think I'm hitting like 45 million or 50 million effective hit points, while the cold the cold stats are somewhere around 10 million I believe something like that I will have to go and double check the numbers but I made the revelation truly terrifying and I think I will show you the build on that ship very soon still you know the threat of bunch of capitals landing so uh, I'll keep the revelation build a secret for now but at one point I will show you what I did with that thing that thing scares me honestly that revelation scares me not really sure how I how I managed to uh, make something like that, but enough of me talking about the tank. Let's go eat some ships. Now our first target for today is a Macariel. My hero tackle is going to go and web the Macariel. May the alt rest in pieces if that Macariel wakes up. While the while the god of destruction Abaddon is slowly going to creep up on the Macariel. They are in my optimal range. The Macariel doesn't seem to have an core. They have been webbed and scrambled so that they don't go anywhere until I am in the web and scramble range. The Macariel is such a beautiful ship. The, the best look, I don't know. I'm kind of torn between the Dalgorn and Macariel in the... No, I, I don't know which one is actually uh, better looking. The Macariel has a unique look, while the Dalgorn is basically a Armageddon with a Blood Raider skin, which I think makes the Macariel better looking. I love bow ships, but man, I have a special place for the Macariel, I think is majestic, it's truly a very beautiful ship. Well then, the Macariel is not trying to kill the, the alt, which works for me. It means that the alt will live another day, for now, famous last words. The Macariel now into hole. Always nice when you have a big faction battleship served like this. Okay, a little bit of hole left. Well, they survived at 5% hole. And the Macariel has been destroyed. Nice. Okay. Let's slowly loot the wreck. Let's 
let's take a look at the kill 3.69 nice they had an enocore but unfortunately it wasn't visible i guess they preferred the default look and this was a full-on tank build Makarial, a very solid build, although the Makarial has capacitor problems, that's why I, I tried to make it work, it's possible but you have to spend a lot on rigs and uh, I just didn't want to do that because I have the barrage implant and my Makarial, if I build it for tank it's a passive shield tank, a buffer tank, uh, if active tank then I use it for missions. But in most cases, I use the Black Ops Makaria with a clocking device. That is evil, I know. It's evil and I love it. Well then, uh, next target we have a Makaria, second Makaria. And this Makaria has the uh, Railblazer Nanocore. I can tell from the, from the looks of the ship that this is a uh, Railblazer Nanocore. A pretty solid one, pretty good one. And this is our second faction battleship for today. Nice. A big, big, beautiful explosion. Faction ships do look a little bit different when when they explode. You can feel the ESC just escape from the ship. Okay, let's go and loot the wreck. Or not, we have... Oh, okay, yeah. 3.66 billion, this Makari was a sniper. Built for cosmic dust. Okay, I was wrong. It's not a trailblazer, it's a core that I've never seen before. Interesting. And I thought that I had seen all nano cores. Well, I was wrong. Next, we have a Apocalypse Tiger. Now, usually when a Apocalypse Tiger lands, uh, I, I get a little bit uncomfortable, but with this build, lasers do practically no damage on, on this Abaddon. This Abaddon can theoretically fight and brawl with a Balgorn and win. You can easily go fight all battleships 1v1 with, uh, with this build, because uh, they ain't breaking the tank. Even a Barrage Makarial is no threat uh, with my current setup and with my current resistances. So I'm not really worried uh, about, about any of that happening. Now if I want to go full anti-Balgorn then I would add a third Nosferatu and I would add one or two capacitor batteries. Or perhaps two capacitor batteries, dual neutralizers and one Nosferatu because Again, lasers don't do much damage uh, on this ship, so uh, the Balagorn will not do much damage to me, and I will not have to repair a lot. And I have a lot of armor, so uh, in that case, the this Abaddon can counter a Balagorn very easily. Now, I don't usually build my ships to be able to 1v1. The 1v1 aspect comes along with the idea that I have. Basically, the goal is to have a ridiculous tank that can withstand a lot of ships shooting at you and of course if you have a build that can withstand a lot of ships shooting at you then you can easily 1v1 any ship in the game again it just comes with the idea that I have with the build on this ship now this apocalypse striker did try to shoot at I think they tried to shoot at the at the Arby but that didn't work because the RB had a lot of tracking disruptors, so they didn't even scratch the paint on that ship. And the Apocalypse Tracker has been destroyed. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the gate, and then I can show you the kill. It was a pretty solid Apocalypse Tracker. Always nice when there is a big battleship just spawning. Uh, waiting for the kill to show in local, but that's not happening, so let me go and check it out in the corp log over here. 2.5 billion. Now this, yeah, this was a very cheap apocalypse, a very interesting build. Didn't know that the apocalypse has only like four, six high slots. Did they nerf the 
poor apocalypse so much that he doesn't have slots anymore. Well, if that's the case, that's sad. And of course, you know that I'm joking about that. They haven't changed the the slots on that ship at the moment. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the apocalypse does lose couple mo couple slots. Although that would be too much. Next, we have one Dominic's. The Dominix is burning to the gate. It looks like they have an afterburner. I will go and I will try to intercept this Dominix. Although intercepting something with 180 meters per second velocity is, uh, yeah. Not something that will happen that easily. But I will try, you know. The Dominix has been destroyed. Let's take a look at the kill of 572 million. Okay. The tier 9 battleships are really nice value for money. They offer really good performance for a very cheap price. Next target we have one uh, Raven. This Raven does have a very, let's say, unique looking nano core. I will go and approach the Raven. We're under attack. The shield of that ship is going down very quickly. And they made me the primary target. Now I'm pretty sure they had a shield tank, although uh, not a very good shield tank. However, they have decent DPS. I would say about 2.5 to 3000 DPS. However, I'm not really worried about shield the shield. Damaged. I am an armor tank, so now the real fun begins. I'm in armor. Let's see how much damage I'll take from this thing. They are in low armor. I am at 91%, 97% armor, my apologies. They're doing about 4% damage with every hit. Barely scratching the surface of my armor. They are now into hole. Second bubble went up to prevent the raven from escaping. And the raven has been destroyed. Nice. That ship had really decent DPS. However, as you could see they didn't have any tank, unfortunately. Oh well, let's loot the wreck, let's take a look at the kill. 812 million. Well, yes, they did have DPS. Dual Adapt is in one large booster. Why didn't this ship tank more? I'm very confused at the moment. I'm pretty sure they did activate the, the modules, I could see the effect, but that was a little bit weird. Okay, now next target we have a Balgorn. Now this is going to be fun. Okay, just in case, I'm pretty sure everyone wants a piece of a Balgorn. So let's see what happens. Triple webs We're and one Nosferatu. Okay. Should not be a threat. I have dual Nosferatus and the capacitor will always have more capacitor than my Abaddon, so my capacitor should be in a pretty good pretty good shape here. The ripple webs means that I'm not going to be able to approach. But that's fine, I have about 40, 
50 kilometer range with the ball sliders. So I'll still be able to do some damage. Now, as I said before, the Balagorn will not do a lot of damage on my armor because of the reactive hardener. The capacitor seems to be holding really well. And, well, surprisingly, the Balagorn's capacitor, I mean the Balagorn's tank, is actually slowly falling down. Which is something that I haven't expected seeing, honestly. Well, okay, I guess 1.5 thousand DPS is enough to break the tank of that Balgorn, so yeah, not going to complain. We're under attack. However, in this case, we had a little bit of bad luck uh, at at our side. Our bubble is uh, currently AFK. I think they were at at work, so they were not able to uh, to go and orbit the Balgorn. And our second DPS, our Megatron Striker, is also AFK. So this is pretty much a one v one with the Balgorn. And unfortunately, because I didn't have a long disruptor, the Balagorn was able to warp away. So, an Abaddon forced a Balagorn to warp away. So far, my idea actually works. Uh, works really well. The idea with the Balagorn, with the Abaddon, works really well. The only thing that I really need uh, for a full Balagorn killer build would be external Sferatus and extra capacity batteries, just in case. Well, the Balagorn is back, so round two about to start. Okay, I'm approaching slowly. First hit. 7.9 thousand damage. But unfortunately, the Balagorn seems to have stabs. We... I think the Balagorn was... was pointed, but... wasn't enough. Oh well. You win some, you lose some. It's all part of the game. But I'm very happy with the outcome, because my idea with the Abaddon so far seems to be working really well. And that means I will have to expand on the idea and further improve the Abaddon for future potential Balagorn encounters. Okay, now we have an Apocalypse. This Apocalypse seems to be shooting back at someone, not really sure who is their primary target. It's not my stubber, that's for sure. So I will go and tackle the heavy webbed. This apocalypse seems to be a armor tank, but yeah, uh, they have been destroyed by the dreadnought. They did hold really well though. Not really sure who was their primary target. I think they were shooting at the at the capital ship. However, I might be wrong. So my apologies if I if I didn't see uh, was their primary target. 564 million is not bad. Now I will loot and we can go to the next target. We have a Kruor. Now the small ships, you know, might be problematic sometimes because they can move fast and you know. They can go under your guns, and that's not going to be pleasant for some battleships, but I don't really worry in the in the Abaddon because I, I can tank a core permanently for a very, very long time. Now 
they are moving and obviously uh, I'm not doing much damage my drones are the only thing that's actually doing some damage on the crew at the moment and the crew seems to be burning well they were burning to the gate now they are actually burning away from okay let's let's see if they fly right in my optimal range if they do that's going to be hilarious if they hit 40 kilometers they might we get popped attack. and they get popped <laughs> I love when the target does something like that a lot of players don't really expect uh, to get popped if they orbit uh, around the battleship at high velocity but with a micro drive against laser ships yeah they will hit you and they can track as as we all witnessed unfortunately this uh, this little core is um, well a little bit cursed because they used a booster and a armor repair at the same time next we have a megathron let's approach slowly I think they have the... What was the skin called? I forgot. That's definitely not a nanocore. It looks like a skin, not really sure. Not really sure what skin it is, but... I'm fairly sure that it is a skin. Oh well, we will find out very soon. Okay, the megathron is now into a hole. I'm sure that they are. I, I think they are shooting at the at the bubble. However, the bubble is orbiting away from the blasters, so the blasters are not hitting. If they are shooting, not really sure. Lately, sometimes the the effects of other ships don't show up, so I'll probably have to go and repair client to fix that. In any case, the Megathron has been destroyed, and I believe that was a pretty good kill. It looked like an expensive ship, but again, I might be wrong, so... Uh, in any case, we will find out very soon. Okay, I'm already pretty close to the gate, but let's align, let's approach just in case. One billion, well, not bad. Nice drops, an armor tank. And I see no nanocores, so oh, there, there we go. The railblaze nanocore. Oh, okay, so that was a nanocore. Interesting. I was pretty sure that that was a skin. Oh well, I was wrong. It was a nanocore. Next target, we have a cinnabel. Now let me quickly wake up the hero tackle alt because the cinnabel might decide to turn around and quickly warp out we don't want that happening so let's wake up the hero tackle alt should appear on grid any second but my friend was faster so they webbed and scrambled the cinnabel and the cinnabel is they did try to warp away but that did not work let's orbit the the Abaddon with the alt. Never imagined that I would have a stubborn drone, but yeah, I have a stubborn drone on my Abaddon. I have three drones. 1.2 billion a armor tank PvP cinnable, very interesting. And they also had a mission in cargo hold. No nano core, by the way. Just a classic, classic cinnable. I use my cinnable just like that, just with a. Well, I have no tank, so uh, only one damage control. Next, we have uh, another symbol. Now, this one is actually trying to burn away, so let me try to approach. This is a tungsten nano core. I used to have this core a long time ago. Now I don't use it. I don't really need to use it. They're using a shield tank. Well, they have been webbed. They lost shield, a medium shield booster. Uh, 
I am slowly approaching up the range. And they are trying to orbit around the the interdictor, but that's not going to work. And the cinnabel has been destroyed. Nice. That was a pretty solid catch. Let's take a look at the kill. 1.6 billion. Now this was a expensive one. Although I don't really see what's so expensive on this ship. Perhaps the gyro stabilizers. Not really sure. Overall, a solid, solid kill. Next we have one Talos. I've heard that the tier 10 Talos, Talos 3, is pretty, pretty good. However, I haven't been flying it. But perhaps I will. Depends on if that ship is actually worth the isk. But you know me, I like to make ships really good. So perhaps I will fly one. We will find out. And the Talos has been destroyed. Nice. Let's take a look at the kill. 250 million. A uh, very... Well, uh, why did this Talos have that one inertia stabilizer? Would be a pretty good passive tank, pretty good, bu pretty good buffer tank if it only had a different module instead of that inertia mod. Next we have another Raven. The shield of the Raven is going down very fast. Well, the previous uh, Raven was purple, was blue. This one is red. Very interesting. Well, they do have a shield tank, but for some reason it did not work well. And the Raven has been destroyed. Nice. Honestly, this is one of the best weekend runs that we had in a very, very long time. A lot of very juicy battleships have been destroyed today. Very nice. The Abaddon does bring a lot of luck. It's, it's hilarious. The moment I started flying this ship, we had battleship after battleship after battleship just popping in and... I'm not complaining. Uh, I find it pretty hilarious actually. Used to be the same thing when I bought the Balgorn. So perhaps the Abaddon will live up to the fame that the Balgorn did live up to. We will see. So far the, the Abaddon is on a really good, really good track record here. Next we have a Mahler 2 Guardian, a PvP Mahler Guardian, they have a web and scrambler as well as triple webs, triple repairs, my apologies. The Mother Guardian is actually a very nice looking ship. You can make the Guardians really solid at PvP. They have a very good tank. They have a really good tank. After all, they are Guardians. So, they might be interesting cheap PvP ships. I sold one couple days ago at 120 million, I believe. Around that price. And the... Uh, 
Garden has been destroyed. Nice. Let's take a look at the kill. Three hundred forty-two million. Actually, a really solid kill. Really solid, Mother Guardian. And just as I said, it is a PvP Guardian. Next target, we have one Tempest. Now this Tempest has a, I would say a solid shield tank, as you can see I'm not doing a lot of, a lot of damage. And they have engaged our bubble pilot, so they came for a fight. Well, if if they came for a fight, a fight, well, they will get one. Okay, my apologies for the weird blink there. My screen did stop working for a for a weird reason. So let me quickly go here just to inform my friend who is at work. Tempest slowly going down. The I think they are a active shield tank. Although the Tempest has a, if I remember correctly, it has a pretty low capacitor. So I'm pretty sure that their capacitor is slowly going down. Or perhaps I'm just breaking the tank because they don't have a good tank. However, they have solid. So it rests resistance, but the shield booster is not performing that good. Okay, now the Tempest is webbed and scrambled. They did hit me once, but they stopped shooting at me. Keeping at range at 12 kilometers. Now the Tempest is into armor. about 60% armor I'm very interested to see the build of that Tempest I know my Tempest is a active shield tank but I did I, I think my build has much better shield boost performances however I did trade that for lower shield resistance so we will see now they are in the hole. And the Tempest has been destroyed. Nice. Okay, let me go and collect the wreck. And then we can take a look at the build of that Tempest. I'm very curious to see what build they have. Perhaps they had one reactive and multiple adaptives again no, no idea honestly absolutely no idea but they did hold really nice felt more tanky felt tankier than the previous two ravens that lost shield like like nothing nine hundred seventy two million okay Triple, yeah, dual adaptives and one reactive. That explains why it felt tanky. Because, well, against lasers and drones and single damage type weapons, the reactive hardeners are going to be excellent. And as you can see, it works really, really well. Okay, next target we have one Gnosis. I haven't seen this ship in a very long time. And the Gnosis has a very unique nanocore as well
But unfortunately the Gnosis does go down rather quickly and they have been destroyed. Nice. Let me go and loot the wreck. Eight hundred eighty five million. Nice. Uh, I would say a very weird build, but uh huh. Let's let's not go there. Yeah, this is a very interesting, expensive build indeed. Next, we have one Nerus. Perhaps it drops something juicy. Always hoping that the Nerus will drop something juicy. Lately, they only have dropped stuff that we don't really need, but that's how it goes. 260 million, solid kill. A lot of stuff did drop, perhaps useful. I'm not really that involved in in industry, so I have no idea what the value of those things that just dropped. Next target, we have a RB2 cover tops. Have to keep a close eye on this RB. Perhaps, you know, perhaps it decides to open Sino, which is always a possibility. Especially since we had the, the capital ship killer fleet a couple of days ago over here. They failed, but, you know, they might return. There's, there is still very suspicious activity around, around these parts, so not really sure what we can expect, but we will, f we will see one day. 549 million quad tracking disruptors. Yeah, this is a little bit suspicious. Not going to lie. And plasmoids in car hold. So they could easily convert that RB into a Sino RB. Interesting. Well, perhaps that RB will be a Sino at one point. Who knows? There is a incoming Sunensis. Now the Sunensis might might be one of the most hilarious ships to shoot because the kill mail, the kill is so blown up out of proportion. These things can be half a billion, two hundred million, sometimes like. 1000 is it's it's ridiculous and this one is burning away from the from the gates but i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that we will catch this little thing oh now they have been wept oh, okay soon as this has been caught now they will be destroyed The main, I guess, drawback on the Abaddon will be its speed. This thing is a brick, it's ridiculously slow, so... That's the only thing that I don't really like about this ship. But, you know, the tank, the range and DPS are really solid. Next we have a prototype. I really cannot wait for these ships to be released might actually happen next next month maybe early next year that's my estimate if that happens well oh man I'll be flying them and I think I will enjoy them because they are some really nice ships okay the prototype has been destroyed Well, um, okay, only four weapons were installed. Now this interdictor was very suspicious, they kept jumping in and jumping out, but unfortunately uh, we didn't manage to catch them because they were pretty quick to, to go back to the, to the gate. Next we have a Caracal Navy that has the Comet Core. The Comet and Core might be one of the most unique looking cores in the game. It's... 
It looks very nice. And the Caracal Navy has been destroyed. Even a Caracal Navy can drop very nice loot, by the way. So, always shoot down anything that's, that can be destroyed. Ni 97 million, solid value for a Caracal. Next, we have uh, another Caracal. Thought that I need to use my alt for tackle, but I guess not. Fifty-five million. Next, we have another industrial ship. Fingers crossed that it drops something tasty. Like the badge that dropped four ships. Unfortunately, this ship was also pretty empty. Next, we have a hurricane. You know what they should make? They should make prototype battleships. I think the prototype battleships would be a very nice addition to the game. They should be like level. Not level, but tier tier eight or perhaps even tier seven. Perhaps that's a good idea. I don't know. Would give alpha players a battleship to play to play around with. Although, not really needed. Not really need to fly a battleship. And the uh, hurricane has been destroyed. I was lagging a little bit, my internet not the greatest lately, not really sure what's happening there, but uh, yeah, my internet's not good, which is nothing surprising. Okay, now it doesn't load the chat, it doesn't load... Okay then, let me just do this real quick, and yeah, the, the internet was dead, now it's better. It died right before the hurricane got destroyed. 136 million. Nice. A very cheap PvP hurricane. Next we have another transport ship. One day it will drop a Bargast. One day it will drop a Bargast and it will make my week. But that day is not today I think. That ain't happening today, probably. 96 million, yeah, this was... There's a lot of stuff inside, but not really sure if anything is worth anything, actually. What is this? What the, what the hell was that? Yeah, all of, a, lot of, a lot of random stuff inside of this... Of this transport ship. Next, we have a Nerus Combat. Now, this is a rare ship. I don't, I don't really see them often. The combat version of this ship might be interesting, although I don't really, uh, I haven't really been flying it. But the Nerus has been destroyed. Nice to have that ship in the collection. Because, like I said before, it's quite rare. And they did carry fighters. Unfortunately, they did not drop. Ouch. Next, we have a MOA. Remember the, the cheap Gila that cost... It? 740 million disguised as a MOA. I remember that. It was hilarious. I th I think I still see that scam on the on the contract window. I 
let's take a look at the field 61 million a solid build a really solid build wish that they used a large booster that would be a better option next we have a Nerus high mobility well it wasn't mobile enough so the Nerus got deleted and again it did not drop anything of value unfortunately I see a pattern here the moment when I, when I don't record when we kill a transport ship that's the moment when it will drop a bargast mark my words that that's what's going to happen I can guarantee that that's going to happen because it, it always happens when you least expect it next we have a cyclone the cyclone has been blown away orbiting the the trunk with the stubber one hundred and sixty million a decently valued cyclone next we have a tornado too They should be tackled. The tornado is on armor. They are into hole, and the tornado has been blown away that should be a pretty solid kill I haven't been flying the tornado in so long I actually am starting to miss that ship I, I remember when I used the tornado to snipe fleets at 300 kilometers that was ridiculous by the way that ship has such a nice long range probably should get the sniper implant next and make the sniper tornado from thousand kilometers it's possible and I would actually do it I would actually do it 478 million solid value let's go to the next kill I mean next targets I already classify them as kills because you know what's gonna happen to them we have a drake Sending the hero tackle towards the drake. Webbed and scrambled. Adapt is on just in case if they don't like the stabber. Now they are into hole. Looks like my alt stole my own kill. Okay. 373 million. Let me just put that in corp chat so that I can uh, view it more easily. Also, let's collect the wreck. Well, oh no, it's cursed. A shield booster and armor repair. Oh no. Just like that Abaddon that had a... That literally had a large shield extender. Still thinking about that... Ab about that build that I've seen there. Makes me question a lot of things. <laughs> okay, joke aside, let's go to the next target. We have a Cyclone. I should be able to uh, eat the cyclone before they turn around and warp away. Well, they're not going anywhere because they are deep inside of the bubble. 
little bit of hole left and the cyclone is destroyed nice let's take a look at the kill 154 million oh, overall a solid value for a Bella cruiser next we have a Hurricane Logistics. I will have to use my ALT to web and scramble this ship because I think they are slowly moving away off the bubble. Oh, well they have decided to come back. Now they are into armor. Now into hull and armor for some reason. And the hurricane logistic has been destroyed. That's a lot of Concord missions. Was probably a expensive one. We're about to find out. hundred sixty million this ship was built for okay this was a full-on loggy ship not a PvP hurricane next we have another MOA I mean another Gila a cheap Gila that doesn't use drones and the MOA has been destroyed nice Let's take a look at the kill. 207 million, nice. A juicy, cheap Gila. Pretty solid. Almost 150 million, by the way. So we were pretty close to the, to the value. All right, well, this was a very nice little run with the, with the Abaddon. This ship is wild. Uh, this ship is, this ship is pretty insane. And I'm definitely looking forward to uh, see the final, the final results when I go and obtain A types for, uh, for the Abaddon. But with that being said, hope that you enjoyed. Stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.